Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Netus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our comparisons playlist. Today we'll compare between tetanus toxin and botulinum toxin. What's common? Both of them are released by a clostridia. Both of them are exotoxins. Mechanism-wise, both of them are neurotoxins. And both of them can kill you from respiratory or diaphragmatic paralysis failure to breathe. Now unto the differences. You can get tetanus toxin by stepping on a rusty nail, especially if it's contaminated with animal manure. Please recall that Clostridium tetany is ubiquitous in the soil and water and sewage systems. Botulinum toxin, you can get that by ingesting tuna from a can that has been damaged recall that clostridium botulinum is anaerobic or you can get it from contaminated honey that contains spores or you can get it from a wound infection or you can simply inhale it recall that tetanus toxin causes spastic paralysis but botulinum toxin causes flaccid paralysis do you remember the floppy baby syndrome Oh, by the way, these topics will be discussed in detail in my Microbiology and Infectious Diseases playlist. I have upcoming videos about Clostridium tetany and Clostridium botulinum. They should be available by the end of 2022. Clostridium tetany releases tetanospasmin, but Clostridium botulinum gives you the botulinum toxin, or Botox. How does tetanospasmin work? By inhibiting the release of GABA and glycine, which are inhibitory neurotransmitter. The inhibition of the inhibitory is excitatory spastic paralysis too many spasms conversely botulinum toxin inhibits the release of acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction no acetylcholine no muscle contraction hashtag flaccid paralysis you're too stiff versus you are too soft and here's the comparison table tetanus toxin versus botulinum toxin rusty nail versus tuna cans and spores in the honey tetanus toxin is not bound to extra protective non-toxic proteins therefore it's not protected while passing through your gut it's not protected from the proteases in your gut and by the way, this is not necessary. It's not necessary to have a protective protein because by the way, you do not get tetanus toxin by ingesting food. You get it by stepping on a rusty nail or by cutting the stump of the umbilical cord with a knife that's contaminated with tetanus. So you're not ingesting it. Therefore, there is no need for a protective protein. But when it comes to botulinum toxin, yes, you are ingesting the tuna or the honey. Therefore, the toxin needs to protect itself from your gut proteases, such as pepsin, for example. Both of these toxins are AB toxins. The A subunit is active, but the B subunit is for binding. Binding with what? With your receptors. Tennis toxin binds your sialic acid receptor and glycoproteins. Botulinum toxin also binds polysialoganglioides and glycoproteins, but these are not the same as the ones that are bound by tennis toxin. The key and the lock. Different locks require different keys. Tennis toxin does not remain at the neuromuscular junction, but botulinum toxin does remain there. Mechanism of action, inhibition of release of inhibitory neurotransmitters, GABA and glycine. Botulinum toxin inhibits the release of acetylcholine, which is necessary for muscle contraction. And that's why tetanus toxin will cause spastic paralysis, because inhibition of the inhibition is excitation. But botulinum toxin will give you flaccid paralysis because your muscles cannot contract. Symptoms of spastic paralysis include the sardonic smile, lock, jaw, and hyperextension of the back. Put differently, Rhizus sardonicus, trismus, and opisthotonus. As for botulinum toxin, it gives you drooping of the eyelids, double vision, and descending flaccid paralysis. Put differently, ptosis, diplopia, descending flaccid paralysis. Both of them can kill you from respiratory paralysis. Your diaphragm is a skeletal muscle. Let's review Clostridium tetany from Picmonic. Here is Titanic for tetany. We have a decreased release of GABA and glycine. Tetanus will give you spasms, rhesus sardonicus, here's the sardine smile, 
lock, jaw or trismus and opisthotonus. Clostridium botulinum, here are the bottles, recall the canned food and the honey spores. You will have descending flaccid paralysis, you'll have ptosis, here's the toast, diplopia or double vision as you see here, floppy baby syndrome and constipation. If you like this video you will enjoy my neuropharmacology course which will teach you about anti-epileptics, antidepressants, antipsychotics, anti-parkinsonian medications and others. You can download it at medicosisperfectionist.com. I also have an antibiotics course to teach you about antibacterials, antivirals, antifungals and antiparasitic medications. The next 10 students only can get a 50% discount towards any of my courses by using discount code ARDS. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Go to Picmonic for animated medical mnemonics. Thank you for watching. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.